Hey look, a river. Let's see what the swimming animation is like. Oh, for God's sake. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strifez and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMO games I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff and ring the bell so you get all the future notifications. As always, a big thank you to the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. More on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Today we're playing DK Online. When I found this game on Steam, I went to check the discussion page. It's made by a Korean company, so I wanted to see what the English player base was like, and there's only one post made by the developers, stating they were going to be as active as they can be. This post was made back in 2019, so I think we can safely say they've not been very active at all. And why would they be? Over the last year, the game has peaked at 24 players with an average daily count of three. The first issue you'll face is the game doesn't launch if you're running an antivirus, so once again I am forced to deactivate my security so I can play a dodgy Korean MMO for your entertainment. Character creation, you've got various classes and they all tell you something about themselves, but the standard background music volume is as loud if not louder than the voiceover volume so you can't hear what they're saying. Have a listen to how the game sounds normally. Considered a young developing culture, the humans have already proven their ability to overcome any obstacle. Blood of the elves hums with arcane power, inherited from the dragons themselves. Though few elves have found their way to the Radice Empire, their the mysterious felons rejected the elemental source. The beast in the lichens combined. The DL race gained strength from a contract made with the ancient dragons. Humans are fierce warriors. Character creation itself is fine, but my god, the background music is intense. I feel like I'm on a timer. Like, this is the music I'd expect over an escape from a crumbling castle. Not a chilled out make your character music. As for the armor, I actually really like it. It's not over the top, it's stylized enough to be fantasy, but still grounded in reality. I'm a big fan of this somewhat realistic look. Right, let's watch the opening cinematic. For time, two goddesses created the world of Litos and filled it with races of every description. The most powerful among them were the dragons, who ruled the land with wisdom and justice to ensure peace. Then, the evil dragon Carvag was born. Carvag sought to be the sole ruler of Litos and ordered his assassins to slaughter the other dragons. Wow. Less than two seconds in, and the subtitles and voiceover diverge. And by about 30 seconds, the voiceover is so far removed from the subtitles, it's basically two different stories. There are literally two different histories depending on which you focus on. You'll find that a lot of Eastern games do this. Clearly, someone writes the subtitles, then a voice actor records them, then someone else rewrites the subtitles, but they don't bother re-recording the voiceover. We do learn that DK stands for Dragon Knight, because the Dragon Knights beat a dragon long ago, and now the dragon's coming back, so we need more Dragon Knights. I see. Game starts, it's a tutorial style island. Once again, the voiceover is the same volume as the music, so while I appreciate it being there, I can't actually hear it. Standard movement, W, A, S, and D, space to jump, but you can also left click to move. There is, however, a noticeable delay from pressing a key and then the movement starting, or releasing the key and the movement stopping, and you seem to move in short bursts of set distances instead of a completely smooth, fluid movement system. Chat to the local NPC, and we're introduced to Bart, Island. There's no voice acting for the actual quest dialogue, but there is voice acting when you talk to random NPCs, snippets when you interact. Let's enjoy it together. You must have heard of me. I'm Hero. You must have heard of me. I'm Hero. It would have cost you almost nothing to have a native English speaker look over your script and say, maybe say, I'm a hero. But no, you decided you know best. There's no combat tutorial, but this MMO isn't aimed at new players. It's aimed at people who already know what to do, because the game refers to player killing as PKs, and you wouldn't know what that abbreviation meant unless you were an experienced MMO player. So I will treat this as a more enfranchised player-style game. Now time for combat, and honestly, auto hits feel good. You start with auto attack bounds to number one, pick up item bounds to two, and toggle target on three with your first actual combat ability on four, which is a very strange keybind setup, but okay. 
Actual hits themselves feel really nice. Solid sound design, nice blood splatter, smooth animation, and the animation of the actual attack isn't too over the top. It's violent and stylized, but it's grounded in reality. I can't deny this auto attack combat has some nice impacts. It feels good, but don't worry, I will discover some problems with it later. Quite big problems, actually. Hand in all the quests, and now we're off to kill some bees. Quests give money, experience, and items. You know the drill. While I'm playing, I'm thinking, you know, this is relatively competent definitely not the worst I've played. Then I remember what I've played and I realised that describing something as not the worst isn't really worth that much. This cow flexes on me by just walking straight through a flaming brazier. Stupid no-clip cows. Here's probably the most pedantic thing I've ever complained about. The word quest on the right-hand side above the quest list is written in a font that's not used anywhere else, and the letter Q looks like the symbol for Magic the Gathering Online turned sideways. This bothers me far more than it has any right to. During combat you build up RP, and if you try and use an ability before you have enough RP, the game lets you know quite loudly. Not enough RP. Opening the character menu for the first time shows you the morality scale, and it actually does mechanically matter. Helping NPCs and being good raises your morality. Killing players lowers it. If your morality is over 9,999, you get buffs to defense and healing. If your morality is under zero, you get buffs to attack. Which means if you're playing a tank, you pretty much have to be good if you want to hit the meta game, and if you're playing a DPS character, you pretty much have to be evil. There's also an enchanting system that uses reagents to improve items' abilities, but it can fail and destroy the reagent because it's a Korean MMO. Of course there's an enchanting system that uses reagents to improve items, but there's a chance it can fail and destroy the reagents because it's basically the law. Kill ten kobolds. Okay. Also have a glance at the world map. It's fine, if a little too bright and colourful makes following paths from one city to the next actually quite difficult. First combat issue, pressing 4 uses a melee ability, but sometimes, randomly, I'll go to use it and the game just tells me I can't use that object. Listen. You cannot use this object. It's not an object, it's an ability. And it's random whenever this happens. It's not tied to the animation, or to the MP, or to the stagger, or the enemy health. It's just every now and again, no. Another system, Magic Catalysts. Equipable items that are used up on every auto attack that make me stronger and, to quote the game, make my attacks look cooler. Not making that up, that's actually what it says. Let's click all the icons along the bottom and see what we get. First off is an attendance check, a daily login bonus because you've got to get those psychological habits forming. But when I click the first box, the one it says I can accept, it doesn't work. So I right click and why does right clicking bring up the Windows right click menu? Is this an internet browser window disguised to look like a game menu? The Magic Cube also has a typo. The words gathered and through don't have a space between them. And actually, now I look at it, this game is riddled with typos and typesetting mistakes. There are so many key words that are bunched together, or, as we'll see later, quest descriptions that make absolutely no sense. Clicking the hunting guide actually does open up a web browser, but not even a good web browser. It defaults to Internet Explorer. Good God game, have some standards. And now we find the item shop, because there are many systems in this game that affect your character's power and progression, and you just know we're going to find solutions to all of the designed problems. Look at this recommended item for 1650. Sealed DK Noblus. I'm not kidding, that's what it's called. This gives you attack and experience boosts and increases your carrying capacity. The cash shop is an absolute smorgasbord of expensive boosts, but look at this. Polar Fox. I assume this is a mount, but it doesn't actually say. Oh, and the word polar is spelt differently in the shop image and then the item tooltip. You got it right once, how did you fail the second time? And what does this do? It's a $35 item and the game doesn't actually explain if it's a mount or a buff or a follower or a usable item. At least the skills menu's laid out acceptably and actually quite full of various skills. The descriptions have a lot to be desired though. I like seeing numbers and formulas to tell me what the skills actually do, not just fluff like an attack that hits with more power. How much more power? Give me numbers. There's also a teleport list too, with all the major cities and local villages unlocked. Actually quite expensive. I don't mind teleport systems in games, but I like it when you have to go to the city first to unlock it. Or if there's a short quest line for the location to become available. Makes exploration of the world actually rewarding. My main problem up to this point with DK Online is how linear and on rails it is. Talk to NPC, they want X enemies killed. X enemies happen to be in a huge group right next to you. Move in, kill them, 
go to the next NPC. They want other enemies killed who happen to be in the next big group. It's extremely paint by numbers. Move from A to B. While fighting these grey wolves, more combat issues. Being in an attack animation roots you to the spot. This includes auto attack and there's no dodge function so every fight is a slugging match of you versus the enemy. It's extremely static and as we'll see later the only mechanic is potion chugging. The floating landmass above though looks really cool. Giant chains holding it down and it's slowly swaying left to right. It's not frozen so it does have this real imposing presence. Graphically the game isn't bad. I like the armor and the character design and even the enemies have looked so far above average. I hand in a quest, get a new item to equip and open the inventory to equip it but while in the inventory I notice the equipment load limit and the negatives of it. Right. If you're carrying between 0 and 50% of your total carry limit, you are fine. But if you're carrying between 50 and 83%, your passive HP and MP regeneration rate will stop. And over 83% capacity, you cannot attack or cast spells at all. This is extremely limiting, because as I'll very soon discover, the entire game is designed around making you buy potions. But oh, there's a load of carry limit boosts in the shop, because of course there are. This in-game shop is run by a walrus. You don't see too many MMOs with a walrus race. Nice to see some diversity. The next quest is pretty far south, so while running I just press all the keys on the keyboard to see what happens. And when you press H, it brings up an overlay of the keybinds, but oh god, oh no, this is awful. Just look at this for a minute until you see the issue. Pressing H opens a PNG image of the keybinds. The image clearly has some transparent sections around the edge, but those transparent sections actually cut off the text. This image is almost useless. The labels for what keys do are cut off. This is the kind of stuff that shouldn't make it past beta testing. This is the kind of rough edge that should be sorted on day one. Gather some giant spider eggs. Oddly, there are multiple egg spawns, but the quest items instantly respawn, so you don't actually need multiple spawn points. The game really didn't want to make finding anything too challenging. Also for this quest I need to collect some antenna from the giant spiders which is strange because according to science spiders don't have antenna. Strange quest writing thing now. The quest giver was the archaeologist Jeromis but I have to hand it in to the archaeologist Jeramis with an A and an O looking similar in the font they've chosen. It takes a minute to spot that. They even use the same character model for both. Was this a joke? The kill X quests continue but up until now every item has been a guaranteed drop. This is the moment where that changes. Collect some chameleon stuff then some golem rocks and the drop rate seems to be around 50% and every quest quest is just a linear area to the next group of enemies. I level up and get some teleport scrolls. How do you think they work? Did you say using a teleport scroll will randomly teleport you to a nearby location? Because if you did, you are right. Who the hell designed this? Seriously, if you want to pick the destination you actually teleport to, you need the premium enchanted teleport scrolls from the shop. Using the regular scrolls the game gives you just randomly flings you around the map. Someone actually designed this and put it in a game. I've also noticed I'm starting to take a lot more damage in fights now and the HP restore rate is very very slow. But oh there are some sliders on the health bar. An arrow and a diamond. Recovery constitution and return. I mess around sliding them but I can't find any actual information on what they do and the game hasn't explained it. I'm going to guess it's a threshold for automatic use of recovery or recall spells but we may never know. I'll die later just to see what happens. Equipping a helmet does not equip a helmet. I mean stats wise it does but not graphically. Every other equipment stot visually changes your avatar. Hands, legs, body, weapon but not helmet. There's no toggle helmet option either so I guess the guy who designed faces just really really wanted people to see them. Oh I've got some of those magical catalysts, the ones that make your auto attack cooler. I equip them and yeah, it actually does change the animation for the better. Why couldn't this just be the standard animation? Why do you have to add a pay to win system for auto attacks? Do those teleport scrolls really just send you randomly around? No game can have a system that stupid. So I try and... wow. They do. Random teleportation scrolls. Why does Gunt sound like a robot speaking inside an empty village hall? Who the hell did sound design for this game? Just listen so you can hear what I hear. Do you need help? Please go. Some of us have duties to attend to. 
or lasting peace among the realm of Redis. Do you need help? As we protect Redis, so too does it protect us. I need to kill the leader of the chameleons because they're preventing people leaving the island, so off we go. In the top right of the screen you can see some small boxes. They are passive buffs and the first one is Premium PC Cafe Buff. Do you actually get stronger in this game if you play in an internet cafe? I suppose that's one way to drive people to an internet cafe and cultivate business relationships with internet cafe owners, and the eastern demographic do still use internet cafes quite a lot. It's not exactly something you see in the west though. So the leader of the chameleons is called Olaqua, and there are multiple of them. Why, game? Were you afraid you'd have too many players? Would demand for the boss be too high? Would it cause queues and make people quit? Well, with the ship freed, we can move on to the main city. I click on this guard to see if the voice acting has changed, and he thrusts his crotch at me. He thrusts his crotch every time I click, and he takes his job very seriously. Into the main city we go. As with a lot of eastern games, the city is extremely spacious and looks lovely but lacks any real personality. It's too perfect, too clean, too elegantly laid out and doesn't look lived in at all. Talk to this important looking woman, Ruana. She has a quest for me. Her quest dialogue has lots of keywords with no gaps between them, making the whole thing bunch together and halfway down, just a string of numbers. For no reason. Look, reading, 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 55, 45, 41, then more quest text. Why on earth is this here? What does it relate to? And why is Puss in Boots sitting on a treasure chest? Go back to the Shrek films. I try and use the world chat. It's disabled until level 30, and there is no one currently talking, meaning there's probably no one over 30 currently on. Or anyone on, really. Journeying into the local wilds and we're told about PKing. PKing is allowed in both neutral and dangerous zones, but PKing in a neutral zone loses you morality. The text box formatting is absolutely dire. There's words missing, typos, spacing errors. This makes the game look so amateur. You know what I've just realised? Tab targeting an enemy gives you no information on them. You get a health bar display, but no level, no element, no stats, no difficulty in relation to you. Nothing. Enemies have no actual mechanical information displayed. There is also a transform card system. Enemies can drop their cards, and then using a transform scroll, you can become that enemy. The more powerful cards are available in the shop, because of course they are. Collect 15 gremlin daggers. The drop rate's even lower, and the fights are taking some serious time now. I'm starting to see the grind creeping in, and after each fight I'm using a few health potions and they do not heal much. It doesn't actually say how much they heal, either a static value or a percentage. There's no number, it just says they heal a little. Oh, there's a river! Let's see how they've dealt with water physics. Are you having a laugh? Nothing. That's what you've done for your water physics. Nothing. I think I'd have preferred an invisible wall. You know this is water because there's a splashing footstep sound and little water droplet particle effects and there's a blue filter when you tilt the camera down. You know this is meant to be water. You just didn't program anything that water actually has like heft or lift. But I mean, there's an enemy down here. So technically, DK Online has underwater combat. It's just awful. Also, I've realized there's a combat delay on some skills. Pressing 4 activates Power Slash, but there's a noticeable delay between the skill animation ending and the damage being applied to the enemy, and sometimes that delay is long enough to allow the enemy to get another attack in. Meaning you've got to open the fight with this attack and then use the auto attack for the rest of the fight to not delay your damage ticks. Good god, I'm metagaming DK online. What the hell is wrong with me? But oh, enemies have the opposite problem. Damage will register on you the instant a fight starts before the enemy animations have even happened and now I get it. Now I see the game's monetization method. You will take damage at the start of every fight. It's unavoidable and your health regeneration is very slow and it's zero if you're over 50% carry weight but potions can be chugged and have no cooldown meaning the only way to survive the kill x quests once you are past level around 12 is to be constantly drinking potions. 
and the game sells you potions in the cash shop. The quest and the combat delays are designed to drain your health so they can sell you the only way to reliably and consistently refill it. The combat animations themselves aren't bad. The actual moment to moment gameplay isn't horrific, it's just repetitive and it's designed to drain your health faster than it refills. You can't outplay the damage. You can't dodge or block, there's no skill to this, it's a straight up numbers battle with potion chugging. Chug enough and you win. Little warning pops up in the chat box saying, CAUTION! Since launching the game you have been playing the game two hours. Playing too much game may harm your daily life. Trust me DK Online, anyone playing you for several hours already has enough problems in their real life. You do not need to remind them. We meet Ricardo, they want 30 null bits. Well not null bits, but bits that nulls drop, you know what I mean. And now we go straight from humid jungles to arid deserts. Wow, this game has more biomes than Dreamworld. And this is the moment you will probably give up. This is the moment any reasonable person should give up. Fighting gnolls isn't engaging or fun. It's just a grind. And if you aggro one, any local archers will get involved too. This whole section is a potion check. If you have enough potions and enough patience to stand there playing the repetitive gameplay, you will win. Getting 30 hides takes a while, because the drop rate seems to be about 30%, but eventually I do hand them in. And the next quest is kill more gnolls. Gnoll warriors this time. And these guys hurt. They are aggressive, and they are grouped up with mages who are also aggressive, and this is just a potion chug fest. I had around 300 before I started the null section, and I am burning through them. The enemy design is nice, but you know what? Mechanically, this game hasn't changed for the last two hours. Eventually, I kill all of them. I hand it in, and guess what the next quest is? Kill more nulls. Sometimes, while fighting, you'll appear to knock the enemy back, which appears to interrupt the enemy's attack animation, and you'd assume you've got the enemy caught in a stun lock, and therefore they can't hurt you. But you haven't! Even if the enemy attack animation doesn't play, the damage they do still happens. You still get hit, somehow. There is no way to avoid damage in a fight. More gnolls and then some werewolves, and now back to the main city. Thank god for the teleport network because I have walked a long way. Oh, remember the carry limit from earlier affecting HP and MP recharge rates? Well, your starting equipment is the heaviest stuff you have and it can't be dropped. Or broken down for crafting materials. Or sold. You can bank it, but not until you've done the bank tutorial. And this does mean it constantly takes up a space in your bank forever. Then, because my Discord status shows what game I'm playing, several of you manage to hop on and find me in the game. And while I'm standing still getting some lunch, you send me a screenshot saying you've checked if the report feature is working. It is. I have been reported. And apparently you can only report up to 10 people. Teleport to the next city, find this priestess, and wonder if the voice acting has improved. You do not need to pray to be heard. Simply keep your heart turned toward her. It has not. This section is a city intro questline, and I'm just running from NPC to NPC, talking, accepting, and then completing. This is the most boring way to introduce someone to a city. Oh, there's a disintegrate system for breaking down items and gaining crafting materials. It's a slot machine, complete with spinning icons and noises. Not even trying to hide the gambling element, are we, game? At the next town over, I find the first daily quest. Collect 30 eagle feathers, and a main plot quest. Kill 15 elite eagles. Most quests do seem designed to stack together like this. Hit level 15, unlock even more, and you know what? This is mechanically identical to the Nulls. Auto attack, use skills, chug potion, repeat. There is no gameplay difference at all. There is no skill, no tactic, no active combat choices. Just start, fight, out heal and win. When potions run out, buy more. That's the game. Once again I'm reminded caution. Since launching game you have been playing six hours. Playing too much game may harm daily life. You know what game? I agree, so I die to see what happens. You respawn at the nearest town with your hit points extremely low. You don't even get a full HP bar, meaning even if you die, you still need to buy potions. The game doesn't even let death get in the way of the cash shop. DK Online is a linear grind from A to B. It's competent enough to a degree, the graphics are nice, the music needs some balancing, voice acting is bad, combat feels solid but is tactically vapid, the world is generic to the point of being forgettable and the player base is non-existent. It is not offensive to play, it's just not a very good game. So to end the review, I will award DK Online playing too much game may harm your daily life out of 10.
Thank you very much for watching. A massive thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. You can support from only a pound a month and you can check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.